Good morning and welcome to St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Beaufort, North Carolina. I'm the Reverend Tambria Elizabeth Lee and on behalf of the good people of St. Paul's, we welcome you to our service of Holy Communion on this, the third Sunday of Advent. We hope that you are safe and well and doing everything in your power to stay that way and help others to do the same. We draw your attention to our Christmas services, which will be virtual. Uh, and include a children's Christmas pageant at 3 o'clock on Christmas Eve, followed by a 7 p.m. service of Eucharist and the celebration of the Incarnation. And then at midnight, if you happen to be awake, if not, you can listen the next day to the tolling of the Christmas bells. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Mighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planning of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among all nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the God has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom, bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown into spring up, so the Lord God will call righteousness and praise to bring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. Those who sailed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping carry the seed will come again with joy shouldering their sheaves. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless 
at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you in faithful is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Isaiah said, now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if neither you are the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. 
This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. May only God's word be spoken and only God's word heard. Amen. For the first 15 years of ministry for me, I worked with young people, grades 6 to 12. Um, had a wonderful time coming to know who young people can be for us. And one of my responsibilities every year this time was preparing for the annual, very elaborate Christmas pageant. And it's really how I watched a whole generation of children grow up. And there was this one young man by the name of Matt. Matt was pretty unusual, pretty special, um, pretty thoughtful, very sensitive young man. He also was somebody who struggled um, in school he, um, I wouldn't say he battled anything, um, but he, but he really, um, he really tried hard to make friends with folks. And the interesting thing, because he was so different, um, people befriended him back and they befriended him in a way that surprised both of them, I think. Well, one of the things that Matt was fond of doing was keeping track of sports statistics, and he could memorize and hear sports statistics in ways that most of us only dream of. So this one particular year, we were getting ready. We were on our second Christmas pageant practice, and um, Matt was playing a shepherd that year. And he was dressed, we, this was dress rehearsal, so he was dressed in the, the perpetual bathrobe, you know, with the rope belt and carrying a, a homemade large stick staff and several assorted animals that had been pilfered from a variety of stores around town. Um, but Matt took it upon himself to take responsibility for something that was missing that we didn't know was missing. So the next thing we hear when the shepherds are supposed to dance, we hear instead Matt coming in the back of the church, holding the crash above his head saying, make way for the crash. And he walks down the aisle of the church, make way for the crash, make way for the crash, the baby Jesus, make way for the crash. And everybody's standing there looking at themselves. Good Lord, how do we forget the crash? So he makes a production of going up the chancel steps and he puts the crash down. And Mary and Joseph are relieved, of course, because there's now a place to lay the baby Jesus. But all the adults in the room and some of the young people caught the message that was said, but was subtle. Make way for the crash. I would modify what he said and say, it's not just make way for the crash, it's make room for the crash. Make way and make room for the crash. We are preparing for the most sacred of feasts, that of the incarnation. God coming among us as one of us. This is what all the hoopla is about. It's what all the preparation heralds. And it's what we, I believe, lose sight of this time of year when we're making preparations for everything but the crash. We're forgetting about it. We're forgetting that it's at the heart of what it is that we are about and that we are doing. It's interesting today in John's Gospel, um, Someone mentioned that, did we just talk about John last week? And the answer is yes, we did. But now we're hearing from the book of John and John's gospel, which is somewhat unusual. We don't normally do that, but we're, we're hearing it this cycle through. And in it, we are hearing what John is saying about the Messiah and 
what John is saying about who he is not. And that's a powerful witness right there about what John says about who he's not. And he's pointing the way always to the coming of the Christ. But this is all taking place at Bethany. You will recall Bethany is the place where Jesus was anointed before his death. So it's interesting that they link the beginning of his messianic ministry and his death in that one place, right? It reminds me of something very powerful that I will get to in just a moment. But one more thing I want to say about this linking is that we are, all of us, in many ways, caught between the cradle and the crash, right? The cradle and the crash, the cradle and the grave. Those two things are, in many ways, one and the same thing. A family in Chapel Hill, where I served, um, had a devastating loss where they literally lost their entire family in a plane crash. And one of my friends was the woodworker who had made the cradles for all of their children. And his family called upon him, the, the family that had died, their survivors called upon Ramsey to make the urns for their ashes and so he had made their cradles and now he made their urns and it was of one piece and it was so powerful so powerful we are a people of incarnation and a people of resurrection and our lives are lived between those two points and this is the time of the year where it's critical that we find a way to live in that tension. We're surrounded right now with death on every side. It's painful and it's true. But what we're also surrounded by is this infant that's coming. It's going to change everything. The whole axis of the world hinges on the birth of this child. This child that we are called to make room for, to not forget the crash as part of our life. Narrative and story, the meta-narrative that holds it all together. So I invite you on this day that the church remembers Stir Up Sunday, meaning a reflection of the colic that you heard, Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us because we're sorely hindered by our sins, save and protect us. I invite you as we head into these next two weeks before Christmas, that you make room for that crash in your life. Room's been made for the other things, but make room for that which gives life, even in the midst of death. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. 
we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all, all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the love and kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare, welfare of the holy, holy, holy. holy Church of God and the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our mercy. For the Justin, our bishop of the Canterbury, Michael in presiding. Presiding. Bishop Rob, our bishop, Tammy, our rector, for all the clergy and people in, in the diation cycle of prayer for St. Peter by in the sea in Swansboro. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, for our governor, and for all in our, our city, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Beaufort and for the city and the community, for who lived in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve, and let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our mercy. For the aged and the infirm, for the widow and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, remember especially those who have commanded themselves to our prayers. William, Diane, Bob, David, Ben, Greg, Robin, Sarah, Ellen, Robert, Jack, Kendall, Anity, Annette, Be Betty, Dan, Jamal, Patty, Sarah, and those we now name either silently or aloud. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed of the Desert for destitute, destitute for prisoners and the captains for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, our mercy for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for the for all the departed, especially Stephen and Jerry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the deliverance from all danger, violence, oppressed, and decoration. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Okay. That we may in our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and the thy compass protect us, O a Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy in the commission of the Saint Paul and all of the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to the Christ our God. To three, O Lord our God. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all of our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We've not loved you with our whole heart. We've not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power. You have created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast 
Alleluia. Behold what you are. May we become what we receive. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly St. Paul's community, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory particularly for the blessings given me, which I now name. Remembering especially Operation Christmas Cheer, Toys for Tots Bicycle Campaign, the Angel Tree at Beaufort Middle School. Believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all of my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you've given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.